be shy Cause I Life won't bring you down too far Razavani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me this evening, got my man, the knowledge himself, Mr. Spencer Ferron. Spencer, before I say anything, loving the haircut. <laughs> yeah, you know it goes. The little, the little mini afro. You know it goes. It's that climate. <laughs> you, you, like I said to your camera, you are looking very young. It has helped. Uh, it, you, uh, it's because we've uh, we've been able to eat. A lot more healthier, and and it's been weird. I haven't been able to run um, for about four years. I was suffering from really bad sciatica. So now that that's kind of healed, I'm uh, I'm hitting the pavement now. So I'm feeling a lot better. So thank you, brother. How's uh, how's life? How how's the family? First of all, Every, everything everything's good. Everything's blessed, um, and I'm 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 just grateful to be here. I mean, it's a crazy time that we're living. It's a crazy world right now. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much so blessed. Spence, we spoke a couple of times over the course of the last few months during the pandemic. Um, when we spoke last time, I don't believe boxing was back, but boxing has come back now. We've seen uh, Frank Warren went first, Eddie Hearn, MTK. Uh, is it good to see the sport back in action? Of course it's good to see the sport back in action. It's, uh, it's good that there's been fights over in America, like Top Rank have put on some shows as well. Uh, uh, PBS has put on some shows as well. Um, so it's good to see that, um, that the sport's back, even though it's, uh, we have to get acclimatized to the different condition that we're looking at. But it's, uh, it is a very, very good thing to see. And I'm glad that um, prize fighters are out performing their profession again. We've seen Eddie Hearn uh, go on record to say that if fighters want to fight now, they need to go into meaningful fights. They need to go into tough fights. Is that a good thing for fighters or bad thing for fighters? Is it fighters who want to progress slowly or is it people behind them that tell them that they need to take slow steps? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good thing for fighters. Uh, when I was promoting, I was in hard knocks. That was my ethos. Like every fight was a 50-50. Uh, a lot of promoters since then have tried to incorporate that, but it is a very, very difficult task because you're not just saying, well, here's this fight, let's make this fight. Uh, when guys have a commodity that they believe that they can build, um, they're always on this not right yet, not right yet. But right now, with how the world is now, um, you're, um, you have to be grateful that you've been given the opportunity because the real opportunity is that you woke up because people with, with the pandemic, people are dying, with uh, the, 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 there is a recession that they're not taught, that, that, that the, uh, people behind financial institutions aren't really speaking about, but there was actually uh, um, a recession going on, a financial re um, recession. So therefore, in the time of a recession, um, the real progression has to be mental aptitude. So fighters should be willing to go in there and take these challenges uh, as long as it makes um, um, economical sense. It, it, they should go and take these challenges. With the whole dynamics, as you mentioned, with the recession and financial burdens on many organisations and companies, how do you feel like it's been, it's now right the right time to evaluate purses of fighters and to kind of restart? Because we see some fighters trying to just price themselves out of some fights. Um, certain times, fighters do price themselves out, but then you know if someone's really pricing themselves out, you know it's because you don't want it. That's it. Um, there's no other reason, period. Because you have to understand uh, um, the business, and I think a lot of people are becoming more business business savvy and understanding how things go and that they should, uh, you, you don't get what you, you deserve, you get what you negotiate. That's the game. And so let's, let's see what happens. But what I do like is the fact that we put a lot of emphasis on this magical O, uh, retiring from, from, from boxing, unbeaten. Uh, and sometimes being unbeaten is a burden. It's a hindrance. Sometimes uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, um, when you take an L, the L's not a loss, but the L's for learning. 
And if you can learn from it, then it's, it's not really uh, an L with a negative connotation behind it, but an L with a positive connotation to it. So I think a lot of these fighters need to just realize that and just go for it. And they should. I mean, what was it, 1956, Rocky Marciano, Archie Moore, when Marciano got 49-0 and retired. And then from that time there, it was like this magical O. Uh, uh, what was it? September 21st, 1985. Uh, it was equaled by Larry Holmes, but Larry Holmes didn't surpass that. So it was so much of a big thing, like, oh, if we could get past this 49 and low, where fighters have done that. Who lost Cesar Chavez? Famous went past it, but they don't pay no emphasis to it. But anyway, that's another story. I could blabber on about history and everyone knows this, right? So um, now, now more than ever, it's about fighters going out and taking an opportunity. And it is very, very important that they do go out and take opportunity because, like I said before, the real opportunity is that we're being given life. So I would say to any young fighter out there, grab this thing with two hands. No, absolutely. Uh, Spence, big show this weekend. Someone you know very well, Dillian White, back in action. Um, I think he's been out. Last time he was out was in uh, Saudi Arabia on the Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz 2 undercard. He takes on a very experienced veteran in the game in uh, Povetkin. Um, Formidable opponent in Povetkin. A man who is greatly experienced. I would say that Povetkin is one of the, the most experienced um, heavyweights out there in the world today. Um, you, you, you don't win Olympic medals. Uh, you don't win versions of world titles and not be able to fight. The man can fight. He really can fight. And if he's up for it, he can be a real nightmare for Dylan White. And that's me telling the truth. And... Also, I've got to tell the truth on this. I've noticed since the departure of Mark Tibbs from Dillon White's camp, it is like a lot of the British public have turned on Dillon White. They've turned seriously. And, 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 and you can see, go read up the websites and that, these boxing websites and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people are, are, are wishing for Dillon White to lose, which makes no sense to me, right? And I'm not even going to delve into the reasons why they could have uh, uh, these negative connotations behind their thought process, but I'm wishing Dylan White all the best. I know exactly what Dylan White would have to do to 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 grab victory, and I think it's excellent that um, Xavier, his trainer now, is a relatively young man in the sport, and I think they've got they they brought in Dave Caller as well to be working in the corner, and I think more so for to 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 kind of, you know, some of Dave's experience rub off on Xavier. Um, um, I've known Dave since I've come into some 25 years and coming into the game. So I think that's kind of cool. But what I don't like is the fact that they haven't really merged. So they haven't worked together. Dave hasn't been out there in Portugal and stuff like that, which I think would have been nice. I don't, I, I don't ever think that they, Dylan White and Dave Cole actually work together. But um, Dave Cole is very, very experienced. So we shall see what happens. Uh, I think he's also, um, Dylan's been working with Ruben Trebias, uh, who worked with David Hay a lot, as strength and conditioning. So a lot of people, there's concerns about Dylan's weight, like he looks really, really trim. But Dylan's been in camp for a very, very long time. But before, the pan before the pandemic started, Dylan White jumped on a plane and went out to Portugal for his training camp because he wasn't too sure when he was going to fight. And now that he has the opportunity to go out and fight, um, he's 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 gonna have to put on a show, but the major thing, and this is the major thing, they're fighting in Eddie Hearn's garden in his backyard, right? And it tells you, um, science tells you that goldfish, a concentration of a goldfish, is some nine seconds, right? Uh, and human beings right now, our concentration rate is lower than goldfish because we're at five seconds. Now that's scary. And I'll tell you why. Because when we are in a fight and you have the crowd behind you, right? They can raise your spirits. You know what I mean? They can raise your energy because we as human beings, we are, we are conductors of energy, right? They can raise your spirits uh, when you're in a fight and you haven't got that behind you. 
and you're listening to your corner because your corner will be shining during you and all the rest of it, it um, that can raise you. And I, I just hope that, um, I don't, in case I hope, I believe that Dylan White has the right person in Xavier because Xavier really does want it as a trainer and that can raise his spirits. But this is not going to be an easy fight for Dylan. I'm just being 100% real. It's not going to be an easy fight. Uh, people are too looking at, oh, well, he lost uh, He lost on Michael Hunter, even though he was given a draw in Pavetkin. Uh, I don't, I'm going to be real. Hunter is a very good fighter, but I don't think that Pavetkin was really up for the Hunter fight like he will be up for this fight, especially now they're fighting for the WBC Diamond Belt as well. And then the winner of that will be proposed to fight for the WBC title. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, not an easy fight. But the things that I believe that Dylan will have to do, if you look at Povetkin, especially uh, what, one of his really impressive wins was against Carlos Takam, how he just, he, he really beat him up. And if you see on the little things that he does in the fight, where he'll, he'll throw like, on the inside, he's got a very inside game, good inside game. He throws neat, sharp little right uppercuts to the body, comes back with left hook. But his key two punches is a looping right hand and the left hook. There is two key punches. He rarely throws a double jab. And if you throw a triple, if, if you could ever go watch a fight where you've seen Povetkin throw three jabs on a trot, uh, trust me, I'll give you a hundred pounds right now. And now I've said it, loads of people are going to be digging up on YouTube, right? He's not the knowledge, right? So, but I'm saying, if you look at the things that Povetkin does, and also when you go to attack Povetkin, he jumps back. He doesn't step back, he jumps back. So with Dylan White, but Dylan White is very good at jumping and go watch his two fights with Derek Cesora. Uh, Dylan White will throw a shot, but he'll kind of rush in to throw a right hand. But him um, stepping in now, but being, uh, but planting his feet to twist over with the right hand, uh, he could actually hit Povetkin while Povetkin's retreating. But he's got to be very, very careful. He's got to keep a very, he's got to keep a very, very high right, right hand guard to block that shot. Sometimes when Dylan throws his shots, he'll throw his shots and he'll drop his hands. On this time now, he's got to throw, because Dylan's got very long arms, he's got to make sure that this right hand of his is, is, is tucked up right here so he can catch the left hook. He catch the left hook and he has to double up on the jab though to push back Povetkin. And when Povetkin tries to jump back himself and jump with a right hand, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. We know it's commonly known Dylan White's been waiting over a thousand days for that WBC shot. Um, 1,032 days now. 1,032 days to be exact. Um, so there is a lot on the line here for Dylan. A lot of people say that Dylan doesn't need to take these tough fights. He can just sit and wait. What are your thoughts? What do you mean sit and wait? He's been sitting and waiting for the longest time. But you have to understand like this. You're only dangerous if you're active. And Dylan White's active. So this is the thing. Okay, then, well, I ain't going to get my shot yet, but I'm going to take this fight. I'm going to take this fight. I'm going to take this fight. This also could be working in his detriment because he's been down in fights, right? It was it was hurt in the in the in his last fight against Wack, right? He he was stung. He was stung in that fight. Um, he he was he went he went down in the Rebus fight. He went down in the Parker fight. I mean, so Dylan White does go down, but he also gets up, and that's a lot to do with strength and conditioning. That's a lot to do with. Uh, 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 his mental attitude um, but it does go down but that's what makes Dylan White even more exciting because he does go down but he's become very very astute and he's got a very he's got a good game he's got a good mental game and I see if Dylan White can work off of his jab uh, which I believe that he will because I think it's going to be his jab and the right uppercut that's going to be the two key punches in this fight because um, Povetkin uh, has um, better punch dexterity than what Dylan White has. Meaning that he's got experience in his hands. But Dylan White has the better versatility in punches. If you see when Dylan will throw, Dylan will throw a right, a one-two, come with a left door, you go left up to the head, left up to the body, and he has the better fluidity. So he's going to have to impose his fluidity to, to, to make um, Pavet can realise that he's actually the older man and that he's, he's days at the top of numbers. Eddie handed an interview with Sky Sports this week and he said that when he spoke to Anti Joshua, Anti Joshua said that Pavetkin could beat Dillian White. 
Yeah, and understandably so. Povetkin hurt Anthony Joshua in the first two rounds of their fight. I remember sitting down, it was myself, Coogan, and Trish Dixon um, at that fight. We were ringside. I got a big up KD as well, because he gave me my ringside seats, right? Uh, Anthony Joshua's guy. And when we were there at the fight, how Povetkin tried to stick it on Anthony Joshua, as we know, like, the reports after Anthony Joshua was ill. Regardless, ill or not ill, it doesn't make no difference. Because if Povetkin were the one, no one would give a toss that Anthony Joshua was ill. Um, and Coogan turned to me and said, Andy Joshua Moss, Andy's going to win it, but he could get knocked down in this fight because of the intensity of how Povetkin was fighting. He was, he was fighting with some real, like, right, this is my chance to become a unified heavyweight champion. And he fought with, with a different form of intensity. The difference is this, and this is what I believe. The difference is this, is that Dylan White relishes the fight. And Dylan White has improved. And I think more than anybody, Dylan White is a, he's a realist. He's not, he's not a dummy. He knows the things that he's got to work on. Uh, and he, he, he's a student of the game. Um, I think it's all to do with mental aptitude because there is no crowd. And it's all to do with how much you want it. And do I believe that Dylan White wants it? I believe that he wants it more than for Pavetkin. I believe that Pavetkin is, is, is eroding somewhat, but I think that we're going to see a very, very good Pavetkin come Saturday night. But I just put it down to the fact that I, I, I see Dylan White biting down his gum short and, and fighting more with skill than will in this fight because he doesn't want to be in a dog fight. We know how dangerous that Pavetkin can be with an overhand right and a left hook, uh, but the administration of Dylan White's jab and David Hay said this on many times, just how long Dylan White's arms are. His arms are ridiculous. I think he's got the longest arm span in the heavyweight division today. He's got ridiculously long arms. So he's going to have to use, you're going to have to use play to your strengths and, and not your opportunities because you don't have any weaknesses. All the weaknesses is something that you can improve on. So that's an opportunity as far as I'm concerned. So as long as Dylan White can work towards his strengths and his opportunities, then he's going to be victorious. Key punch for him in this fight, I do believe he's going to be his jab his uppercut, and also his left hook, because when, when Pavekin throws his left hook, he actually drops his right hand, so he leaves his left hook to get caught with a left hook. And we've seen what Dylan White does. Dylan White has the best left hook in the heavyweight division. So there's an old adjective in boxing of a hook with a hooker. So if Pavekin wants to get into that, then we'll see what's going to happen. Um, I see Dylan White being victorious. I would like to say stoppage, but I'm actually going to go for Dylan White on points. Uh, and I can see the score and be something like 116, 113 across the board. That's what I see. We know that Tyson Fury is due to rematch Deontay Wilder. Um, they've talked about having that fight in December, may get pushed back to the early part of 2021. What does Tyson Fury do if he's victorious against Deontay Wilder and Dylan White is his mandatory? What should he do? What does he do? What do you think he does? Does he vacate? Does he get elevated to franchise? Um, does Dylan fight the next contender for the title? Um, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm not rightly sure what's going to happen right now. Uh, and that's the truth. Um, I think Dylan White gets victorious in this fight. You know what I mean? He should get a shot at the world title. And the WBC uh, in... Um, Mauricio Solomon have said that like, Dylan will get his shot at the title now. So I would just like to see him get that. But you know what? If there's big money put down on the table for, for um, this Tyson Fury-Joshua fight, and it will be ridiculously big money, then I could see um, him taking that Joshua route. Um, but right now, it's a bit higgledy-piggledy. But what I do see, I do see uh, Tyson Fury being elevated to franchise champion then the, the, the WBC belt, the, it gets a bit confusing, but the WBC um, regular title would um, then become possession of Dylan White if he gets victorious on the weekend, which I believe that he will. And then it will set up a, a big money fight and give Dylan White better negotiation skills for when he does get the fight with um, Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua, because he will say that I also hold a claim to being a world champion as well. Another heavyweight on the rise, um, 
trainer for Peacock Dream, Daniel Dubois, recently, well, did an interview this week with IFL TV, and he said, I will knock out Dillian White. It, it, well, he's meant to say that he's a fighter, right? Uh, and, but what, what Daniel Dubois should do is, is concentrate on his career and Joe Joyce. Because I'll tell you this now for nothing, Daniel Dubois, Joe Joyce ain't no foregone conclusion, right? Even though I've got my reservation because I saw um, in the Brian Jennings fight that Joe Joyce got, got hurt when he fought Jennings. He got the Brian Jennings. What am I talking about? In the Jennings fight, when he fought the American, he got, he got hurt to the body. And Jennings is a small heavyweight in comparison to a Daniel Dubois. But I would say that it's not a foregone conclusion of who's going to win that fight because... Um, he's very, very deceptive. He doesn't look pretty to watch when you see him. But I remember back in the day, there was a heavyweight called, um, in the amateurs, there was a heavyweight called Chris Henry who boxed out. Old school people remember him, right? Chris Henry from the Islam, Islam Boys Club. And Chris Henry had that kind of methodical way you down kind of fighting style, which is very, very similar to, um, to, to what Joy Joyce has. So, but this is not a foregone conclusion. So Daniel, Daniel Dubois should really, really be concentrating on that uh, and when that fight happens. So you can call that Dylan White all you want. Um, I think Dylan White's... It's weird how people are calling that Dylan White right now because Dylan White was willing to fight anybody. There's no need for Dylan White to fight um, Dubois at this present moment in time because Dubois actually brings nothing to the table. And that's the God's honest truth. Yep, he, you know what I mean? Dylan White built himself... He's a pay-per-view fighter. Uh, Daniel Dubois is a fantastic, super prospect, but he ain't beat nobody yet, and that's no disrespect to him. But he's a good fighter. So let him get past um, Joe Joyce first. If he gets past Joe Joyce, then we can talk about, yeah, you fighting Dylan White. But right now, that's like, it's like hot air, and that's the goal on the trip. Spent just finally, uh, Frank Warren, I'm sure you saw Frank Warren uh, put out a post uh, last week. I think it was last week or the week before, where he matched his fighters with matchroom fighters. And there's this lovely poster and dream fights that we love to see. Uh, Yard, Boatsy, Edwards, Yafai, Fury, Joshua. I wasn't on the poster, but obviously. Uh, Dubois, White, Joyce, Chisora. Is it realistic that Queensby Promotions and BT Sport and Matchroom Sport and Sky Sports can come together to make these fights and collaborate? Um... Uh, yeah, they can. It's a lot of egos, but there's going to have to be a lot of money put down on the table. Uh, I spoke about this recently on DAZN, um, where I did my bit as a UK correspondent for them, and I said exactly the same thing. You know what I mean? Money talks, bullshit walks, right? And now, fighters are getting very clued up. So, for to get Anthony Yard and Joshua Boatsy to fight each other, that's going to be a lot of money. Joshua Boatsy is no dummy. He's getting paid very well right now by Matchroom, and Neva's Anthony Yard, and Neva's Babatundi Jai, his manager, and, and also their new lawyer that they've got on, on the case as well. So they're not done. That's going to cost a lot of money. Um, Dylan White does not need to fight um, um, Boatsy. I'm oh, sorry. Doesn't need to fight Dubois at all. And that's the truth. And that's not me saying, oh, you need to stay away from him. No, there's nothing to prove. You know what I mean? You've been long enough. Let Dylan White get victorious, like I said, come from victorious, and then get a world title shot. And then, if Daniel Dubois wants to get in challenge for a world title, there's even more money, isn't it? Right. So that's how I see that one. And uh, about a fight. Pardon me? Joyce Chisora. That would be a good fight. I'd like to see that. Because they've been muted for a very long time. Um, I could see that fight happening. But you know what? Joy, um, Joyce, Joyce will fight anybody. And so will Derek Chisora. But Derek Chisora is more like, show me the money. And I'm there. But there's fights that's kind of gone on the radar. There's a really good fight. Zolfa Barrett, who got, who got a spectacular knockout, come, come from behind win the other day. Um, you know, him versus Archie Sharp. That would be a very good fight because uh, Archie Sharp had a very lackluster performance the other day. But I rate Archie Sharp a lot. I think he's a very, very good talent. But he had a lackluster performance. And... And so and so dissolved for Barrett. He had a lackluster performance until pulling out 
the win with 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 the horrible shot, right? Horrible left hook. So those two, that'd be a great, great fight. Great fight. So they're they're the fights. There's there's fights out there that yeah, I could I'd like to really really see. So if they can make them happen, just make them happen. Put egos to one side, and and make these fights happen. But I want to know the real reason why they want to make these fights happen. What's the real reason? And I don't know there's a real reason behind it, but I'm not going to get into that right now, right? But there is a real reason why they want these fights to happen. All right, Spencer. Uh, appreciate you giving me a little bit of time today, um, this evening. And it's cool, man. It's blessed. I'm just chilling uh, in, in my house right now. And so, yeah, it's, it's all good. And uh, as, you see, as you've seen as well, like MTK Global... Academies that's being set up, which is fantastic. I might be going down next week to give uh, talks to the youngsters as well. Uh, I think that's really, really good what MTK Global are doing right now. I'm blessed to still be doing my bits with the foundation, and and I'm blessed to be doing my little bits with Tundi on our podcast, The Fight Is Right, which is which is getting really good numbers. So I'm really blessed for that, you know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I enjoyed the uh, Shakur Stevenson that you did the other other day. Uh, but where can if people want to tune into the podcast, where can we where can they go? Uh, you can go on iTunes, the fight right on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's on Radio Bang, and it's also on YouTube. So yeah, you get me, Bobby Tundi Ajayi, speaking the rules on 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 boxing and uh and night and I'll tell you the nice thing is the nice thing is this is that um boxers open up to us. So I'm really, really grateful for that. Question, Spence, is that uh, when are we going to see you at 3 a.m. in the morning on your Twitter going for a jog with uh, Tundi Ajayi? Just forget that one, <laughs> all right? Just forget that one. My, 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 my jogs are usually about 12 in the afternoon because it's taking about three hours to pop myself out to go running. <laughs> <laughs> all right? So you can forget that one, brother. Spencer Ferron. Also, it was, birthday, it was the birthday of Marcus Garvey. Um, uh, who started the Pan-African movement in America in the 20s and 30s and it was his 133rd birthday uh, to everybody who has been a Garveyite. Um, uh, we, we have to um, give homage to a great man. He came from Jamaica as well and uh, Marcus Garvey famously said uh he said, without confidence, you are twice defeated in the race of life. But with confidence, you have won even before you have started. Marcus Garvey was an absolutely incredible, incredible man. Um, so happy birthday to Marcus Garvey. He also said, God and nature, uh, God and nature first made us who we are. Then out of our own creative genius, we make ourselves who we want to be. Follow that great law, put God and the skies as our limit and eternity our measurement. One of the greatest human beings that walked this planet, and it's a shame that he's not more greatly celebrated. Well said. Spencer, I appreciate your time this evening. Um, stay well, stay safe. Uh, love to the family, and we'll catch up with you soon. Spencer Farron for IFL TV, thank you very much. Cheers, mate.